Most of our families. No, nothing. Just leave it as. Yes. Yeah, most of our families, we've gone through bereavement, loss, you know, then uh, we are all uh, battling up this pandemic challenges. So this webinar is planned to enable us to, and also to encourage us and guide us to face the various challenges. Uh, you know, the pandemic is brought in for us. And so we have uh, uh, eminent personalities, Dr. Stanley and uh, Dr. Femin, expertise in their fields, and they'll be addressing us and uh, you know, uh, enabling us also this evening. How do we face the various challenging situations, particularly the factor of anxiety, there's fear, you know, so many confusions, a lot of questions in our minds. So this evening, it's for us to come together and uh, learn uh, whatever best possible that will enable us to move forward in a very positive note. And that's why this very webinar is uh, titled Pandemic, Paranoia and Positivity. How to positively move forward amidst the difficult situations that we are facing in. And so uh, with that brief introduction, we will begin our uh, program this evening. Let us seek uh, and invoke God's presence in our midst. And I request uh, Reverend Dennis to uh, open with a word of prayer. Shall we look to God in prayer? Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us to engage in meaningful discussion. Allow us to grow in every aspect of our life. Lord God, you have told that we should not be afraid, yet our faith is weak and we are fearful during this time of pandemic. But you, Lord, will not leave us at the mercy of the storm. Tell us again not to be afraid and help us to cast all our anxieties on you because you care for us. We commend our resource persons unto your loving care Grant them your wisdom and direction. Help us together to form community through this webinar. Continue to lead us and guide us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, let me uh, briefly introduce our resource people for this uh, evening webinar. Uh, firstly, we have uh, Dr. Stanley Macadon uh, in our midst this evening. And uh, he's the ex-director, Bangalore Baptist Hospital. And uh, he's also the honorary palliative care consultant, Bangalore Baptist Hospital. He's also the national coordinator, Christian Medical Association of India, uh, for its palliative care programs. And, uh, he's also served as a palliative care consultant at the Church of South India Hospital, Bangalore, and the very, uh, you know, uh, Coming up of the geriatric ward, he's been responsible for that. He's a pioneer in palliative care. Uh, so uh, thank you, sir, for having accepted the, the invitation. The very moment I asked him, he uh, no, very joyfully he agreed. And I'm so grateful to you, sir, uh, that you've uh, agreed and accepted and you're here with us this evening. And we are very delighted to have you in our midst. We also have uh, Dr. Femin. Uh, Rajaya, Femin Rajaya in Amits this evening as a resource person. He is the consultant pediatrician at the Church of South India Hospital, Bangalore. Thank you, sir, for agreeing and uh, accepting the invitation to be the resource person for this evening in Amits. Thank you, Paul. In fact, both uh, Dr. Stan, thank you, sir. Both uh, Dr. Stanley and uh, Dr. Femin, apart from all of these uh, no professional uh, introduction, uh, one thing I would want to say is they are really genuine human beings that I've seen, the acquaintance that I've had with both of them, very committed with the ministry, with the healing ministry, uh, and the dedication that I've seen in both of them, the Dr. Stanley McKidden and uh, his wife, uh, Rajini Ma'am, uh, I've seen them when, while I was at CSI Hospital as a chaplain, you know, they were the, the many workshops that they conducted for us and the way they encouraged us in the healing ministry. We are very grateful to you, sir. And uh, of course, Dr. Femin, 
very, very simple, humble person I've ever uh, met across, you know, with such a high profile, and, but yet very, very humble. And uh, uh, especially the way uh, Luke was taken care of uh, by Dr. Femin, you know, we as yes. a family, uh, we are really grateful to you such a humble human being and serving God in the healing ministry with such commitment and dedication. So happy to have both of you in our midst this evening. So without much ado, I would want to uh, give the time to Dr. Stanley. Uh, uh, first, he'll be addressing us and after which uh, Dr. Femin would be addressing us. So over to Dr. Stanley. And we have uh, Mr. Herbert Paul, uh, who'll be helping us uh, with the technical uh, side. So thank you, sir, for your efforts as well, for organizing this and helping us out in the technical side. So uh, he'll be uh, muting all of us so that, you know, there'll be effective uh, and uh, quality uh, hearing for all of us. So uh, over to Dr. Stanley and uh, Mr. Herbert Paul. Yes, Dr. Stanley, you can. Uh, can I have the first yes. line? Uh, you want to play the first slide? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, good evening, friends. Uh, can you see the slide? Yes, I see. Good evening, friends. Uh, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I would also like to bring you greetings from my church, the Koramangla Methodist Church, which is there in the left lower corner, and the two institutions that I'm involved with, uh, the Bangalore Methodist Hospital. And this is yeah. I thank uh, Reverend Violet, uh, and Herbert and all the organizers of this webinar for your kind invitation and this privilege to participate in this webinar. Thank you, uh, Reverend Violet, for your kind words of introduction. I speak now not as someone with some knowledge and abilities, but as someone convicted as many of us feel of our poor stewardship. Yes, we have been poor stewards of huh? God's word, his resources, his people, and his body, our church. So in keeping with the main theme of the webinar, pandemic, paranoia, and positivity, I'm going to deal with the aspect of suffering, suffering due to the COVID-19 India variant and our response to this. Next slide, please. So let's just look at the background. On 12th of March, 2020, WHO declared COVID-19 a pandemic. And then in February this year, the second wave due to the Indian variant B1617 was discovered in Amravati in, in Vidarbha. And the surge is thought to be due to a more infectious variant, also airborne transmission and flaunting of the uh, preventive measures and like what you can see in these two pictures here. Total flaunting of preventive measures. Next slide, yeah. Okay, next one. Yeah, so when we talk of suffering, it is not just suffering for the person who is infected with the, the virus, but also the family. And the suffering is multidimensional. It is total suffering. It is physical, it is emotional, it is social, it is financial, and it is spiritual. And it is both for the person and family. The physical side, yes, we have all these various symptoms, fever, sore throat, weakness, breathlessness, agitation, confusion, 
and for the family it is exhaustion exhaustion of running from one hospital to another trying to find a bed trying to find some oxygen and all these things emotional emotional pain, uh, suffering is due to either some fear or some concerns or both and resulting in anxiety and anxiety going on to panic and when it continues you know, it right. despair right. depression for both the person and family social suffering is mainly when you're admitted in the hospital you are alone your family cannot be with you and there is isolation loneliness you're separated from lo your loved one and also and if things get worse you you're in icu uh, you're not able the your dear ones are not able to bid proper goodbyes if you're deteriorating and you know dying the financial side yes you may recover from your um covid and be all right but your financial losses will be there your hospital bills your loss of jobs and you're back into debts so all these things cause financial suffering and then finally the spiritual side spiritual suffering so you know why is god all the why questions you know why is god punishing me why why is this happening is this a, 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 a generally everybody is saying is this god's punishment or is this is a wake up call uh, people are now beginning to realize the need for god also as i men mentioned earlier when you're not able to say your goodbyes not able to do proper last rites for the loved one all these things add to the spiritual suffering next slide please cs lewis the famous theologian says god whispers to us in our pleasures speaks in our conscience but shouts in our pains it is his megaphone to rouse a deaf world pains we can substitute with suffering so he shouts in our suffering it is his megaphone to rouse a deaf world the question is are we listening next slide so total suffering needs total care in other words it needs holistic care and so here in this diagram you have the soma that is the physical the psyche the emotional the social and the all encompassing dimension the spiritual dimension next slide so when you say we, that you, that the, when you have suffering and you need holistic care well palliative care is a good platform to deliver holistic care and palliative care is holistic care of people facing a life limiting illness or in the context of covid a serious health related suffering and it is to improve their quality of life and 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 they can recover but in case somebody is deteriorating and dying then the quality of death also and it is not only for the person but also to help their family is it okay yeah yeah next slide so the, what are the conditions that need palliative care you know palliative care started in the context of cancer care incurable cancer but now cancer is only one third two thirds are non cancer and in the context of covid disease you know not only severe covid but Uh, any covid infection you know if when we have an interface with palliative care we will be able to address the suffering simultaneously also so we have all the end stage medical diseases cardiac failure kidney failure hiv aids copd and advanced neurological disease the multiple strokes and things like that uh, and also you have what we call long term care for people who are paraplegic you know motorcycle accident or falling down a construction site and breaking their neck and being paraplegic for the rest of their life also a big group that is coming up are the elderly with either physical or cognitive frailty next slide sorry sorry uh, uh... no next slide yeah 
next next yeah palliative care is derived from a latin word pallium which means a what is this the something coming in between herbert yes uh, okay. the screen gets blocked ah pallium means a cloak or cover in other words all the symptoms you know pain breathlessness confusion delirium agitation everything they are cloaked with treatments the primary or sole aim of which is to promote patient comfort so to palliate means to alleviate or to mitigate next slide so keeping that in mind let us look at some of the other perspectives in the indian context we put a shawl or a panadai to honor a person here you can see in this slide here uh, president mukherjee being honored by uh, uh, dr manmohan singh and indira uh, sonia gandhi uh, and from a christian perspective it's wonderful that christ clothes us in his righteousness isaiah 6:10 6110 says for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness also uh, in first corinthians chapter 15 verse 43 we we read the perishable is clothed with imperishable mortality with immortality christ has won victory over death so you know in palliative care we are just not clothing people covering people with uh, treatments but we are giving them healing and wholeness in christ and that's a wonderful perspective for all of us you know who are who are disciples of christ next slide i said palliative care is total care it is holistic care and here you have a Uh, equilateral triangle in other words all these aspects symptom relief psychosocial and spiritual support teamwork and partnership all are equally important and the common thread which keeps everything going is communication without good communication everything will fall apart so symptom relief for the physical aspects and then the psychosocial and spiritual uh, for emotional financial and spiritual aspects and teamwork and partnership and and we are working in partnership with our lord with our god with our trinity team and finally the aim of all this is to empower empower the patient and family to harness their potential everybody has god given potential to take care of themselves and by empowering them by giving them certain skills we are able to harness that potential and win the battle next slide so let us look at these psychosocial aspects and the important thing in this is anxiety now anxiety can be due to fears or concerns or it can be fears and concerns or either one of them and see what the scripture tells us in philippians 4:6 do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to god 1 peter 5:7 cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you matthew 6:25 to 34 it's a wonderful way god is telling us hello why are you anxious i tell you do not worry about your life what you will eat or drink or about your body what you will wear is not life more than food and the body more than clothes look at the birds of the air they do not sow or reap or store away in barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them are you not much more valuable than they can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life we get up in the morning thanking god for you know that we have we are privileged that he has kept us safe and we are able to see a new day god says not even an hour can we add it is all from him from by his grace next slide 
So let us look at uh, the fear aspect and then we look at the concern aspect. Now the fear is due to the rapid spread of the virus and also rapid deterioration. And more, more important than this is the misinformation. So fears can be allayed, can be reduced by right information and positive attitude. So in the green here, I've given some um, queries of how we express fears. Will I get the vaccinations? Well, if you're taking Covishield, you have to wait for 12 weeks. It's for your own advantage. So nothing to worry, just wait. And also the government is planning on target vaccinations by the end of this year. And hopefully it will be done because there's a lot of pressure on the government now. Will the illness get worse needing hospitalization? Well, we need to remember that 80% have mild disease which can be managed at home. And what you need to do is to monitor your oxygen saturations with the pulse oximeter. And if it is dropping less than 92 or your respiratory rate, if it is going about 23 per minute, then you need to uh, see whether you can get hospital admission. Will my loved one get a hospital bed? Will they get oxygen? Well, this has been a problem in the beginning of uh, last month in May, a lot of uh, difficulty was there, but now the situation is getting better. More there are more hospital beds now and oxygen available. Will I survive? Well, most people survive, 95% uh, and plus survive. Uh, only about 5% have critical illness of which only about 2.3% could end up dying. It is the elderly with multiple comorbidities, you know, other illnesses like diabetes or, or malignancy or <clears throat> um, obesity or heart disease or, or um, lung disease who are more at risk. But important thing I want to stress again is to avoid all fake news. Next slide. No, no, ah, yes. So it's wonderful that the Bible gives us a very positive perspective regarding fears. Now, if you look at Psalm 103, all these verses are so good. And it says, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. The steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him. In other words, God's covenant, this covenant relationship of love is for those who fear him. And what does this mean? And Pastor John Piper puts this very nicely. He says, fearing God means that God is in your mind and heart so powerful, so holy, so awesome that you would not dare to run away from him, but only run to him. And it's amazing that, you know, we, we, we know that we have been made fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 9, 139 verse 14. So when we are fearfully and wonderfully made and we have God, such a wonderful God who, who, who loves us, then it is our response to love this awesome God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our strength, our holistic loving of God, as mentioned in Deuteronomy chapter six, verse five. Next slide. Now let us look at concerns. Hello? Yes, yes. Any problem? No, no, no. I think some people just joined in, so I have to mute them. So. Okay. So uh, fears, I said, you need to allay it by proper information and attitude. But concerns, you need to do something about it. You have to do something about it. For example, unfinished business, you know, um, maybe taking care of uh, your 
uh, professional uh, commitments. All that needs to be addressed. Something needs to be done about it. If you have not written a will, you need to do it. If you haven't left uh, left a legacy, you know that you, of your values, you need to do that. If you're worried about the spouse, uh, your spouse's health, and how he or she will be coping with uh, with 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 things after you're gone, then you need to have a family conference and uh, and uh, discuss with friends and make sure that this will be done. So uh, when we do all that. No, the concerns are addressed. But children, their education, marriage, and whether they are settled, all these things need to be looked into. And you know, it is by having small meetings and having that affirmation that things will be done. Also, there is this need to forgive others or be forgiven. And it is very important to find that person that you want to forgive or be forgiven from. And so, it is good to get that person and you know settle these matters. But then, when we forgive or when we are forgiven, a big load is taken off and we can we die peacefully. And the other major thing is about the sins that we have committed. We want God's forgiveness, and it's wonderful that we have this communion uh, thing at the end. You know, which gives us that opportunity also to you know if we have not done it to do that. To commit our, uh, to come to the Lord in repentance of our sins and be forgiven by Him and seek His grace. Next slide. So, I want to just touch upon curing versus healing. Suffering needs healing, not curing. Yes, with curing, you know, your uh, illness can be reduced, but your suffering can continue. You know, your financial suffering can continue. And many other issues can continue. So suffering needs healing. And this is where we as disciples of Jesus need to follow him. He did, he preached, he, he taught, and he healed. And this is what he expects his disciples to do the same. As uh, the Nazareth uh, manifesto in Luke 7.22 and Matthew 4.23. In scripture, the emphasis is on healing, restoration, salvation, wholeness, and holiness. All these are from the same root word in Hebrew. And out of the 37 miracles, total 37 miracles our Lord performed, 26 were concerned with healing. And all miracles in which Jesus cured are known as healing miracles. As in every case, the person is restored to wholeness. God promises healing of our soul as he gave his life for us. Curing of an illness may or may not happen. Depending on his will, our prayer for cure may or may not be answered as we wish. But God always answers prayer. It may be a yes. It may be a no. It may be wait, my child, or it could be here's something better for you. Friends, we may not be cured of a terminal illness. We may die, but we can die sure in, in Christ Jesus, which is what he has promised. Next slide. I mentioned that communication is a very important aspect of palliative care, and I'm not going into too many details, but uh, this picture here of Job, and his three friends, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar, I believe they didn't talk for seven days. Can we do that? They, they get 10 out of 10 for communication. Because in communication, what you need to do is to be a good listener. It's when these uh, friends started talking, then things started becoming difficult. Frank communication builds trusting relationships. The non-verbal communication, as we can see here, should complement verbal communication and not contradict it. And we need to develop the skill of active listening and respectful silence. We need to be non-judgmental. We need to be sincere. And we need our communication must be an expression of love. Next slide.
Yes. Uh, in that uh, earlier diagram, the triangle, I mentioned that our aim is to empower, empowering the person and the family. And we can do it by providing the personal protection equipment and oxygen. We can continue with COVID care that should continue side by side. Quality care is only uh, what we call, uh, it's an interface with, with COVID care, which is the main thing. And information and practical skills we can have hand-holding by video calls. And another important aspect is the use of subcutaneous route, you know, the, uh, uh, putting a needle under the skin and using it to manage a person at home. The family can be easily taught this. Uh, and this is a wonderful way that you can manage a person who doesn't want to go to hospital, especially an elderly uh, person who decides that he wants to stay at home and be at home. And you can help that person and keep him comfortable. Next slide. Yeah, here you can see, uh, you know, the subcutaneous route, you know, uh, you, you have a 10 ml syringe with, with the combination of medicines, medicines for breathlessness, for pain, for uh, agitation, for vomiting, all this can be mixed. And uh, you, you kept the subcutaneous needle here under the, under the clavicle, under, on the chest, and the nurse is teaching the family mm -hmm. how to give one ml of this combination. Okay. Yeah. And the family can be easily trained to give medicines by the subcutaneous route, especially when the person cannot swallow or is uh, agitated and breathless. Next slide. We call it the family driver because, see, in the West, in the UK, you know, the same 10 ml syringe with the same combination and same uh, cannula is used, but they use what they call a syringe driver to give a continuous infusion of the drug for 24 hours. This is not practical in India because it's very technical and very costly. And so we have developed the system of teaching the family to use this combination of medicines in a 10 ml syringe and just inject one ml of this combination every four hours and in between as needed. Next slide. This is very important. You know, uh, all the COVID care and everything that goes on in the hospital or uh, over the phone, you know, helping people regarding the COVID care management, everything falls into this red uh, uh, section here. But that is only 30% of what the person needs. Many of the problems in advanced disease are of a non-medical nature. In COVID-19 also, financial aspects, social aspects, psychological aspects, loss of role, spiritual aspects, all these, the community has a major role to play in addressing these problems. So it is very important that the community is involved. Next slide. Volunteering is the ultimate exercise in democracy. You vote in elections once a year, but when you volunteer, you vote every day about the kind of community you want to live in. Next slide. Here is an example of community volunteers. This is from the neighborhood network in palliative care from the Institute of Palliative Medicine in Calicut. And you can see this huge hall full of community volunteers. This is their volunteers conference. Can we see this <coughs> happening from via churches? an army of Christian volunteers. Let us hope for that. Next slide, yeah. <laughs> so a positive response to pandemic paranoia. With Jesus as our motivator, Jesus who is the victorious God and who has already made us more than conquerors, but where is the army? We need an army of volunteers. And not only just uh, uh, volunteers, but trained volunteers who can then be very effective. And we have a very nice 16-hour WHO curriculum for training volunteers for palliative care using the Zoom platform. And this can be organized through CMAI uh, and that a national level certificate is given by the Indian Association of Palliative Care. And uh, there is a fee for this certificate, just 500 rupees. But everything else can be done on Zoom and CMAI can help to organize this. Next slide. 
This is Dame Cicely Saunders. This, she is the pioneer of the modern hospice movement or modern palliative care. And this is one of her favorite, a famous quotes. How people die remains in the memory of those who live on. I mentioned earlier that palliative care is not only about quality of life, but also about quality of death. Because if, if death is bad, then all those who are in the family, they are all affected and they, are, they go through abnormal grief. They themselves need psychological help. And so achieving a good death is important. So next slide, please. So bereavement support is another important area where the church can be involved. And the goal of bereavement support is not to be a, you know, a great counselor. It is to identify people who may need counseling and send them for that. And the goal of bereavement support or befriending what we call is that the pain of separation is replaced by the joy of remembering. So initially, this is the grief cycle. You have shock and then you have protest. And that is where we have the pining and yearning and searching and the intense feelings or what we call the pangs of grief. And then there is despair, disorganization, but slowly acceptance, reorganization, and then life goes on with new purpose and meaning. So the church can be involved in this process and it's an important area of ministry. Next slide. Yeah, so here, uh, you know, before the person has passed away, this is what we call anticipatory grief counseling. You know, here the pastor is talking to the person and, and asking him about his various wishes and concerns and he's giving him that hope that everything will be looked after and in from the baptist palliative care uh, we provide bereavement support for a year as much as possible and at the end of that year all those who are bereaved are invited for a gospel message in the chapel and to to light a candle in memory of their loved one and place it in a, a tray or a vessel of sand as putting it in the sands of time. And that would help the closure of this bereavement problems. Next slide. So pandemic, paranoia, and positivity. When we have positivity, you know, when we are supported, when we are helped, you know, our immunity also is boosted. So when we have fear, panic, and uncertainty, we need to trust in God's sovereignty sovereignty. He is in control. He has not gone out of control. He knows what is happening. God allows certain things in our life and sometimes it is, it is for our good. Uh, when we have, we have fragmented healthcare system, yes, but we can help each other. We need not be fragmented. There are many bad deaths that are happening because of the situation and therefore there will be a lot of abnormal grief and therefore we can help by providing bereavement support. Volunteer support is key to success. Uh, we can do simple things like even communicating over the phone. And this morning, our senior Ben Kaptoma was telling, make three calls in, in a day, you know, and that is enough to help three people, you know, and they'll be so happy to hear from you. The ordinary citizen is making all the difference nowadays, the person, the ordinary uh, peon in the hospital, the ward boys and ward aides, the ambulance drivers, the burial ground people, all these people we have, who we did not consider important, they are the ones who are making the difference. So it is a wake up call for all of us, the Church of Christ. It's time for us to mourn, to fast and pray, to bring up the family altar, bring it up, uh, give it importance to study God's word to come close to God and to each other and be good neighbors. Next slide. So there are many things that are happening, ways people are already helping with personal protection and COVID appropriate behavior. All these aspects they are helping, helping for bed availability, oxygen, medication, ambulance, providing essential commodities for people who are living alone, providing monthly groceries for poor families, and especially the Sikh community how they are providing food and not only food, but many other things, oxygen and various things. 
for people. Talking to people, as I mentioned earlier, church groups praying daily for people by name, praying with individuals and family, taking care of children whose parents are affected and helping with last rites. Next slide. Robert Frost said, two roads diverged in a wood and I took the one less traveled by and it has made all the difference. Yes, the path to Christ is a narrow path, but when we take that path, we make all the difference for the people that we are dealing with. Next slide. And again, um, we say man lives with hope. Can he die with hope? Here, here is a nice positive thought by Rabindranath Tagore. Death is not extinguishing the light. It is putting out the lamp because dawn has come. I'm sure there is a lot of Christian thought in this. A new day, a new dawn. Next slide. But our hope, our Christian hope is a living hope. Living hope, hope in the Lord Jesus Christ who said, I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. John 10, 10. And God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So abundant life here and now and eternal life here and hereafter. Here and now and hereafter. John 3.16. Next slide. So friends, I just want to take two examples here. One is Jesus calms the storm as we read in Mark chapter 4, 35 to 41. The question we need to ask is, is Jesus in our boat? Are we his disciples? His one word, one word in, in the Holy Bible can calm the storm, can calm the storm of suffering, physical suffering, emotional, social, spiritual suffering. And he promises us peace, the calm and peace that we cannot understand, which is beyond our understanding and which is the, what the world cannot give. He's asking us to come to him, to return to him. We who are heavy laden, he say, come to me and I will give you rest. I will give you healing. I will give you wholeness. I will give you salvation. And Jesus says, be earnest and repent. Next slide. Next slide, yeah. Yes, friends, Jesus is knocking at the door. As we read in Revelations 3.20, when he's talking about the church in Laodicea, is Jesus in our churches? Or is he waiting outside, knocking to come in? Have we become lukewarm? How are we as a Christian community? How are we responding to his commandment of loving our neighbor as ourselves? Are we a healing community? Are we working to bring God's comfort, his peace, his healing and wholeness, wholeness in Jesus and bringing glory to God? Next slide, please. So friends, I want to conclude with this beautiful verse from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Yes, friends, God is faithful and merciful. His mercies are new every morning. He's waiting with open arms for us to return to him. Let us resolve to be the people God wants us to be. Let us develop an army of Christian volunteers. Let us be in God's will and strive to build his kingdom and bring all glory to him. Next slide. So friends, we may, may not hear these nice expression of thanks, but somewhere somebody who, who has been benefited from our involvement will be saying this. Next slide, please. Thank you for being so caring. Thank you for being so loving. Thank you for being so helpful. Thank you for being so thoughtful. Thank you for being so selfless. Thank you for volunteering. Your actions are priceless. And I'm sure this will bring a smile on God's face. Thank you.
I'm sorry, I overshot the time. No, uh, uh, that, that's fine, Doctor. Uh, you know, I, uh, I'm happy the way you brought out the holistic perspective and uh, also the, that curing and healing, you know, the way you highlighted the difference and the church uh, to work as a community and uh, the importance of communication in times of suffering and uh, how the church can work as a community, as a family to support and encourage and be there for those who are suffering. So, you know, those highlights are uh, really uh, thought-provoking. And uh, thank you so much for your presentation. And uh, yeah, we will still hold on. And even as questions come up, I think we'll take it after uh, Dr. Femin addresses us now. Over to Dr. Femin. Thank you, uh, Reverend Violet, for this opportunity. And uh, it's nice to be able to meet with uh, your congregation. I'm also little fed up, I would say, speaking to doctors and patients <laughs> about COVID. So it is a nice uh, welcome change for me to be here. And uh, I know especially Dr. Stanley has made my job a little much, I mean, very easier, uh, you know, uh, after he combined uh, the medical aspect with the spiritual aspects so wonderfully well. So in fact, uh, you know, I am, I'm taking some time to gather my thoughts. It was a wonderful presentation, sir. Uh, really hats off to you, uh, salute you. It was really good. So, um, friends, I, I don't have a presentation because uh, my part of it is to, to talk about positivity. And uh, I'm not here to teach anybody about uh, COVID because uh, I'm sure all of you know more than me because you know, I'm not a student of WhatsApp University. Okay. So I will, not, I will not speak a lot about uh, the medical part of uh, COVID. Uh, so the thing is, uh, you know, why I'm not a why 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 did I say that I'm not so uh, so much uh, interested in talking to you about COVID? Is because you know uh, last year WhatsApp University told me that uh, you know Indians uh, the the heat and the climate here is so hot that uh, uh, we are not going to get COVID that uh, you know we're not going to be affected so badly, and look at where we are and. Uh, there was another WhatsApp message all over the place saying that ah, we Indians are very uh, immune. Our immune system is really good. COVID cannot attack us and all that. And look at where we stand. And of course, there were you know, our friends uh, who told us uh, that, you know, you take steam from one nose, nostril and take, leave it from the other nostril, you will not get COVID. Well, friends, no. Then I decided to move out of WhatsApp University so that you know, that helps me to remain positive. All this, with all this mess around, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Stanley brought out one important issue. Cure is different from healing. You know, it's cure is just your physical suffering is alleviated so that you call it as cure. But healing is much more than just cure. It has got an emotional aspect. It has got a spiritual aspect. It's got a a mental aspect, a social aspect as well. So when you say, when you look at this pandemic, now you may not be able to avoid being sick, okay? And you will be cured. But the social, the emotional, the mental, spiritual aspect is in your, your, in your own hand, no? So what we are doing day in and day out is looking at all these messages, looking at the TV news, looking at everything, we are slowly going into a state of unwanted fear, you know, paranoia. Paranoia, it's casting a shadow on positivity. You know, the, the whole paranoia is sort of, it's putting a blanket on our, you know, on our positivity. And that I think is a big major threat than COVID itself. We are all so worried and paranoid that, uh, you know, we are so worried uh, that, you know, something is going to happen because every day we wake up thinking that today I might be positive, positive. I'm not talking about the actual positivity. I'm talking about COVID positivity. We don't need to be worried about COVID positivity. We need to be positive in life. Take the whole situation as a positive, uh, you know, uh, in a positive mindset. And... Uh, <clears throat> Speaking about uh, 
you know sometimes we have this guilt feeling why why is it happening to us our grandparents were there they did not happen during their lifetime our parents were there it did not happen during their lifetime well uh, we are to be blamed you know as a human kind we thought uh, we are invincible we took things for granted uh, we we sort of uh, you know did not bother about our environment and i think that has played a major role in what in the state where we are today it's it is unimaginable <clears throat> we none of us would have even in their wildest dreams even a even a filmmaker or a director may not have thought of such a story but then we are here but is everything so bad you know speaking let me tell you some positive things now the covid virus it stays in your body for only 9 to 10 days by the 10th day the virus is not there in your body even if you are covid positive so the virus is it will go off okay it will go off from your body after 10 days it's not there anymore and 80% of people who are infected who are covid positive they are having mild symptoms or they are asymptomatic that means out of 10 eight of them may not even know that they they are having covid so it's not such a major issue after all it's not that everyone who uh, gets covid is going to you know land up in an icu or uh, everyone who gets covid is going to die no and the next the the most uh, important uh, positive uh, you know thing which i want to say i'm a pediatrician luckily because i don't have to deal with uh, you know a lot of people who are in the icu now but good thing is that children are not so badly affected they are not susceptible they are not as susceptible as the adults luckily fortunately and uh, they are not uh, you know most of them won't require admission and uh, you know uh, it's very very rare for a child uh, to die of covid so i think uh, we need to uh, recognize that there these are the, the positive thing only one out of 100 people require uh, uh, you know admission one one out of 100 children are, who, who get uh, covid require admission and most of them don't require any medicines so the, all these uh, remdesivir and uh, long queues for oxygen and uh, god only knows what those cylinders are getting filled up with but people are running behind the oxygen cylinders people want beds and everything so for children it's not needed so fortunately and again i say i'm really happy to that i'm a pediatrician uh, managing these patients and uh, you know there is the, we are looking at vaccines so that's a positive i think the government to in this uh, today's uh, morning paper uh, said that uh, you know uh, about by the end of this year most of us most of the indians will get vaccine so that's a good thing and uh, already 50% the statistics say 50% of uh, people are uh, you know uh, at least children 50% of them are almost uh, they have got some immunity towards the infection so it's not such a bleak or very bad scenario after all and uh, also as uh, sir mentioned we are almost uh, coming to the end of this uh, second wave and uh, we only I, we pray that there will not be a third wave but then again if at all there is a third wave also i think we are uh, prepared for it and there is no need to panic no need to think of third wave as something which is going to be you know much more severe or people say that you know it's going to affect children much more no i don't think that is going to be the case it's going to if at all there is a third wave also it's not going to uh, it's going to affect everyone equally so we need not really be paranoid about uh, the third wave as such so yes we need to remain positive don't look at all the reports about the black fungus and it's a fungus it's been there for years but then you know when uh, when the media projects it as a, a black fungus you know it sounds really terrible but uh, but then no it's not that everybody gets a black fungus uh, whoever gets covid so those are all uh, i think these it's not good to uh, uh, you know follow these sort of negative uh, news uh, day in and day out but at the same time i think we need to be responsible uh, i'm not uh, saying that we need to you know we, we need to be uh, very careless okay so when whenever we uh, you know whenever the doctor or when somebody at home gets a covid infection uh, you know it is good if uh, to follow the doctor's advice 
uh, they would advise testing. Many people are scared. You know, the moment we say, even if one person is positive, uh, it's good to know whether the other people are positive as well. You know, one positive thing about the whole thing is if everybody in the house is positive, they all can stay together, cook together, eat together. Okay, so the second wave is in a way, it's, a, it's, a, it's good that, you know, it's affecting more people in, within the same family. Whereas in the first way, we saw only one person being affected, that person, whether it's a child or an adult, has to be put in a separate room and all. Now, if most people in the house are affected, at least that one person or individual need not be isolated. If there are four people in the house, everybody can stay together, but they have to be in isolation. So it is good if the doctor is saying, please go and you know test yourself and isolate. We should do that instead of uh, the, you know, developing the fear. What if I'm positive? Nothing is going to happen. You are going to be all right. Only thing is you have to stay at home for 14 days. That's it. The other thing is, uh, you know, sending uh, grandchildren, you know, the, I mean, children to their grandparents' house, which is a very dangerous thing. As a doctor, I'm saying that, you know, uh, as a pediatrician, I can tell you that uh, there are a lot of uh, elderly people who are affected because as soon as a person in the family is affected, they are more worried about the children and they send them to their grandparents' house. And uh, there are, the grandparents suffer a lot because of this. So that is one thing which uh, we all need to understand. Children are not as badly affected as adults. So sending them away you know, to grandparents is not a good idea. So these are all, I think any doctor would advise this. Uh, so we need to follow these simple things, you know, just take uh, their advice. And uh, you know, there, there are you know, many, not many medicines which you need to give it to children. Even for adults, for that matter, most of them would require with paracetamol and uh, simple, maybe some multivitamins may be given. Even that is really not really needed. And uh, no need to run behind so many drugs, medicines, remdesivir and all. So, and uh, also uh, home remedies. Yes, to a certain extent, it might help your symptoms, but don't overdo it. Don't overdo the uh, steaming and all that because that can actually cause more problems to you. Uh, when when you look at just the children, uh, you know, uh, in the last one year, what uh, what is a, a serious problem which I see is that, you know, many children are uh, they are locked up, locked up at home, no physical activity, they are all obese. Most children have gained eight to ten kilos. I'm sure half the people in this uh, meeting would agree with that. You know, if you go and check your children's weight last year and this year, most of them would have gained eight kilos, seven, where, where they should be gaining about two to three kilos. They are all obese. Most of them who come and see me after a year, I'm surprised to see them because they're all put on a lot of weight, which is not at all a good thing for the future. Obesity and being overweight is much, much more serious. I'm sure Dr. Stanley McKedden would agree with that. It's a much, much more serious problem than underweight. I tell the parents, don't worry if your children are underweight. Being underweight is not a problem. Or being overweight is a major issue. So this pandemic has just worsened that you know, obesity part of it. And I think we all should take care of that. Our children are also holed up at home. They are also seeing the same WhatsApp which you are seeing on their phones or your phone. They are also watching the same news which you are watching from morning till evening. And they are getting affected. They, there are a lot of children who are going into depression, who are going to ang into anxiety. Uh, sir uh, highlighted the fact uh, about it in the elderly people. That is what that's happening in children as well. And uh, imagine a child who's depressed. It's such a sad story because nothing is going to happen. This COVID is going to go away. But then these are things which can cause lifelong problems for them. And uh, I sometimes think that this whole... Uh, COVID uh, you know, lockdown is a blessing in disguise because how many of us actually spend time with our children? We were all running behind our jobs morning to, including me, we, morning till evening, uh, we were at our work. Uh, the, the kids, you know, used to go off to school from morning till evening. They are very, they are, you know, obsessed with studies and everything. And uh, this has given us a chance, you know, uh, to socialize within the family father and mother can eat with, uh, with the children. They can you know, discuss things, spend more time with each other. They can you know, uh, 
they can eat together they can pray together and uh, the children are more happier and that also prevents them from you know the next biggest problem is gadgets children are always either watching tv because they are at home watching tv or with their mobile phones or some gadgets always so screen time is becoming a major issue that is again leading on to uh, depression and suicidal tendencies it's becoming like an addiction you know so um, you know uh, on the positive part we are all together we can spend time with our children let them you know keep them away from gadgets as much as possible limit their screen time to not more than 2 hours in a day yes 2 hours one, in a day should be fine 2 hours does not mean 2 hours in the, on the tv 2 hours on the laptop and 2 hours on the phone everything together should be 2 hours okay so i think everyone should pray together have, eat together and discuss you know issues i uh, what i do uh, in my house is that i am now encouraging my children because i get phone calls from every uh, relative whether they are an adult or child uh, you know every day from morning till night uh, i get phone calls regarding people who are covid positive what to do and uh, it's more of panic rather than you know it's more most of the time what i give them is reassurance but uh, so i tell my kids you know give them a list and say please pray for these 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 people and please thank god that they have uh, you know he, for healing all these people give them a list and now i find that at least they have got that uh, got into the habit of praying for others you know so uh, also try to involve them in small activities you know charitable uh, activities help uh, you know let them understand what is going on in the community let them understand how people are suffering let them understand how people have lost their jobs even the auto wala you know is not having a job so these are things which they should understand make them do you know uh, small small things like them get a small little aquarium let them do that otherwise they will be just st- you know stuck with their phones they are not going to eat that this problem is there even before the covid thing came but then now it's becoming more and more se- serious this screen time so they don't socialize and if you you know when we were children we used to be excited to go to somebody's house or somebody is visiting us our children don't want to go anywhere they say you go appa i am no, i'm not coming or if somebody visits you you know they are in their own world so i think that's not the right way our kids are going so i think this covid uh, times we have time to look at all these things with regards to our children avoid watching news avoid especially when children are around don't watch news don't because they don't show the positive part of it they don't show the 98% of people who have survived covid they only show the 2% who died they only show the few people who have some rare uh, fungus or whatever because they make a living out of it but then they are taking lives out of it uh, indirect in an indirect way so i think friends i think uh, you know we need to uh, you know stay positive there is nothing to be really scared especially when it comes to children and if we take care if we uh, uh, you know maintain adequate social distancing and whatever has been proposed i think uh, we should be able to overcome uh, the second wave third wave whichever wave i don't think we need to be so worried about it and uh, uh, as uh, uh, dr stanley pointed out uh, you know fear god don't fear the illness if you fear god more, more god will love you more so i think that should be the motto and everyone who's listening today i hope this one simple thing don't fear the illness fear god and that should be enough to take you through this whole situation let us all remain positive till the whole world turns negative of covid so that's all i wanted to say and you know any questions uh, medical non medical i'm happy to share it uh, okay i am just uh, giving uh, uh, anybody who wants to ask a question can just put a thumbs up in the chat and i will unmute you or if you feel that you cannot uh, ask a question and you prefer to type i will read out the question so if anybody has question just put a thumbs up in the chat and i will unmute you and also if you can tell who is supposed to answer the question that will be good <laughs> <laughs> because most of the questions will be for dr stanley i think yeah. going to be an optional uh... i have retired uh, from it <laughs> <laughs>
So, uh, so is. Uh, I am also retired. I am also at home for the last one year. <laughs> we have a C which says none of the above. <laughs> okay. Or the pastor can answer it. Or two. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's what I was saying. There are two pastors in one frame. So. Ah. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Uh, anybody has any questions? Can just put a thumbs up there so that I will unmute you because you won't be heard when you can just because all of you are unmuted. I think uh, Reverend Mitra had a question. I saw him. He's yeah, yeah. He's there. Okay, uh, Reverend Mitra, I will just unmute uh, Reverend Mitra. Uh, Yes, Reverend Mitra, I think you're unmuted. You can ask a question. Right, okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, thank you. It was it was very nice to see and hear Dr. McCadden after ages. Um, we knew each other or we know each other for a, for a number of years. Um, it's nice to see him, uh, but I missed uh, a first part of his um, talk. But uh, let me start with... Uh, this, uh, the, uh, uh, now I may have a problem of uh, pronouncing the pediatrician's name, but uh, yeah, he talked about Dr. staying Dr. positive. Yeah, Premin Rajaya, something like that? Yes. Uh, yeah, so okay, I may be wrong in pronouncing his name. I don't want to take a risk. So let me, uh, so this doctor, uh, you said staying positive is the best way to go through this pandemic. <clears throat> no matter how much you are positive, the fear lurks. Fear lurks because the surrounding. It is not that uh, we are, I'm glad that you said don't watch news and don't watch that. I have stopped. Of course, we have not installed a TV in our house and I even stopped reading newspaper for some time because nothing was positive. There was nothing good to read, but to be depressed about whatever was talked about. The point that I want to ask is, whether we like it or not, however much you try to be positive, the negative seem to overtake. And then, you know, the cause immense anxiety and fear. So um, how easy is it to, it is easier to set than to you know, go through the experiences. You said, you know, the, uh, I'm glad that you said 80% of the patients who go through this pandemic or the coronavirus are healed only a uh, uh, you know, few cases. But in our own church, in our, uh, in the other uh, neighboring churches and friends, many people, did you know go without a cause? Though they were, um, you know, the 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 virus came and then they, it simply you know the swallowed them up. But uh, what do we do? We have an answer to such a, a kind of a, a thing that happens in life. Um. Uh, Reverend, uh, um, I'm feminine. You can call me feminine. So, oh, okay. yeah, uh, uh, throughout my life, I've had people difficult, uh, you know, having difficulty with my name. So that's not. <laughs> no, it's a unique name. <laughs> yeah. I, it's the first yeah. time I've heard it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, the thing is, uh, you know, how to stay positive. Uh, you know, it depends. It, everybody is not the same. You no, know? like uh, yes. you know, uh, each individual has has a different attitude, different perspective in life. Uh, and also their home environment is different. You may be having a totally different uh, atmosphere in your house and uh, somebody else might be having a totally different atmosphere. There, so hmm. it is, there is no one uh, answer to how to stay positive. But yes. then we can only learn. We can only learn from what, uh, what uh, our past experiences is. And uh, yeah. with regards to COVID, uh, in spite of, uh, yeah, I'm a modern medicine doctor, but I would, uh, I will put my hands up and say that uh, we have uh, not found all the answers to this uh, uh, coronavirus. So the spiritual part plays a big, big, big role. 
I am not a pastor, so I will not be able to tell it out in uh, you know with biblical um, uh, uh, you know uh, this thing uh, biblical uh, verses. But then, uh, what I know for sure is that you keep yourself occupied for one with hobbies. You know, you may uh, watching TV. May, when people say I I watch movies, that's not a good have hobby at all. The, you know. you can have some hobbies you can read some good books you can yes. listen to some music for some time and uh, try to uh, indulge yourself into in other things apart from uh, your phone and uh, uh, you know you are you are very lucky that you don't have a tv at home but then you know <laughs> that's the, that's not the story with the 99% of people in, sure. in the city agreed yeah, agreed tv is a big evil it is it is definitely a big evil yes. and it is uh, uh, something which uh, it's unavoidable but at the same time uh, try to limit it and uh, like i said we have i live in an 800 square feet house and uh, uh, we have i have some plants and all and uh, my kids they go and water the plants it take keeps them you know every evening it keeps them away from the tv for one hour at least and uh, uh, we are also there we me and my wife go and do some gardening and uh, you know we so that we talk to each other and uh, you know we have a small little aquarium and uh, my kids wash it and do things like that even if you don't have a place to have anything you know if you have a window also you can just have some three or four small little plants indoor plants outdoor plants so spend time away from gadgets spend time away from uh, you know people who are always sending you negative messages uh, that's that's the only answer i have uh, right now keep keep yourself occupied with positive things i think that would be fine that would be good for you but uh, uh, you know reverend violet would be able to help you out with uh, the spiritual part of it how to stay positive thank you but we need we thank need, you. Uh, we need combination it. of everything uh doctor i have one uh, small uh, thing about uh, fear because uh, sometimes fear is important in a positive fear you know when i say when i suppose i'm as a musician and as a graphic designer you know before every concert i play i have a sense of fear that fear keeps me focused you know it's a kind of a positive fear uh, that is one and then also i was talking when we say uh, stay away from uh, tv news and all this but does that ignorance become you know a kind a of bliss. yeah so I think it, we should imbibe we should take in the messages of what is happening but how do you become positive after the uh, listening to a negative thing yeah if you look at what has been happening over the last one year i yes. think the message the positive messages or the messages regarding uh, what we need to know about the pandemic and what we have to how we should take care of ourselves that part of the fear you have to channel it and uh, you know you, you should not let uh, you should not in, you know fear is good but paranoid being paranoid yeah. not yeah. is not so even though we need to be aware of what's happening as far as this pandemic is concerned i don't think we know much uh, more than what we knew the same time last year so so what it's been the same thing again and again and the, the for the children and uh, you know people who are uh, sitting at home all the time uh, you know it becomes uh, they develop a sense of helplessness helplessness mm. even yes. when they are absolutely fine you know a neighbor even my wife uh, when there is uh, somebody in the neighborhood getting a covid uh, infection she is scared and uh, every day when i come home from uh, my hospital or from my clinic she looks at me as if i'm a ball of uh, you know corona <laughs> so, so that because that that fear is because i i've been right from the beginning telling people and including my uh, family that it is after all a viral fever it's a virus <clears throat> and your body is well equipped to take care of it but that is what we need to understand and uh, over and above that you know you are panicky and you every day wake up thinking you are going to die some day now that is not positive fear yeah no that's what i uh, mean you know, because uh, some people i mean, i know had uh, uh, you know some people take uh, you know positivity or they say i don't have any fear and they try to walk out with a mask with, with a mask and try to you know so that is i, I mean i'm talking about people who are christian who say like you know god will take care of me but is testing god 
I mean, are you going to bring God into testing? So is that also uh, very positive? Yeah, uh, I think, uh, uh, sir, you want to take up this question? <laughs> yeah, what I think is, uh, you know, as you said, you should not put God to the test. Yes, now, yes. I believe whatever science has taught us, I'm a, uh, I'm a science man, I'm a modern medicine man. I cannot, uh, I don't have answers for everything uh, related to human's uh, illnesses. But what I know is, and I strongly believe is that what, whatever knowledge I have gained from science has come from God. And uh, so I, I do not think, you know, somebody should go around and say, I will not wear a mask and God is going to, you know, help me out. Uh, and I'm a, I'm a strong Christian. That is foolishness. That is not, uh, you're just, uh, you know, trying to put your, uh, the Lord to, uh, your, to the test and you're not using your, God has given you a brain to make use of it. And you should trust what God has taught us over the years. Uh, and uh, there's a question for both the doctors. Like, suppose somebody tests positive in your house. What's the first step you should be taking? If somebody tests positive and... Because no, some, of us, see, some of us are only, uh, I mean, heard of somebody else testing positive and their family was affected and all. But when it happens to your family, you go hit the skater, you call all the people or you call the people who already have went through the situation. So, I mean, the first yeah. step, I mean, like... You, you, have, you yeah. have to be vigilant. That is important. Yeah. So, you have to keep a check on certain things. And there are guidelines for that, you know. And uh, not panic. You know, that uh, the vigilance should not become like a panic kind of thing. Because then... You know, your your own immunity will also suffer. Yes. When you have positive uh, attitude, yes. yeah, that, you know, okay, yes, I have this and I'm taking the necessary precautions and I'm preventing further transmission, you know, then, uh, and you're depending on God's uh, uh, grace and mercy that he will see you through. See, ultimately, we must remember that God is good and he's good always. It's not that when we have a problem that he has lost control or he, he doesn't care for us. He's always good. And whatever, when we believe in that and uh, when whatever happens, whatever situation happens in life, we can see that there is something good in that for us. So, I, And I think uh, during this pandemic and, you know, people staying in quarantine and things like that, uh, there is a certain uh, thing that Anger management has come up in a new way for people, you know. See, uh, if, if, if there are a lot of people who would be sitting in the office and just firing people left, right, and center and trying to be very calm at home. But now your home is your office. So for a lot of people, anger management has become, I mean, in a positive way, you know, what I'm trying to say. And uh, a doctor, can one of you just give us a statistic of the kind of uh, anger and anxiety how it affects your physical insight, your immune system, basically. Uh, I'm sorry, Pastor Vasu is not here, but yeah, yes, yes, yes. I know. He's expert, the one who was, expert yeah. on this, on all yeah. these anger yeah. and everything else. And uh, what his basic uh, yes. uh, message is that all these things, negative things, uh, can ca um, can cause harm for your immunity. Your yeah. immunity is boosted when you have positive attitudes and uh, everything, anger, everything can be turned around to your benefit. Uh, Dr. McKellen, this uh, one uh, thing which in your thing was a little interesting me and I never knew there was something called as a subcutaneous root. Sorry? Subcutaneous root where you said that you know, oh, can administer yeah. people from your house. See, subcutaneous root means putting a needle under the skin. You know, you have these children, uh, we used to use the butterfly needle to start a, uh, to get into their small veins. I'm sure Femin the, is the expert at that. <laughs> but, you know, you don't need to put it in a vein, just under the skin. Okay. And it is as good as the intravenous route. It takes a little another five or 10 minutes more. That's all. No, no, doctor, uh, what I meant is uh, uh, where can we get somebody to help us with something like that? You know, yeah. at the church community, then we think that yeah. we see, want to do this. Yeah, well, 
in this covid thing it is fast forward so you know we have, we have to equip people rapidly so we can do we have a video on this how to start a subcutaneous route you can do look at that and then we we'll have to do what we call a video call and handhold them you know and it can be done for the others you know with a terminal illness we have already developed a relationship we have gone to their home and we teach them in one visit we can teach them many of our housewives or many uh, um, family members do much more complicated jobs putting a needle under the skin is peanuts for them see so it can be taught very easily and it's very effective and it's cost effective yeah because i attended <clears throat> sir's uh, uh, palliative care uh, program about 7 uh, 8 years back in baptist and even i was surprised that there is something like that because it is something sir i think uh, it's something which people are not aware of it's a, such a simple uh, thing for even a uh, you know household member can be easily taught how to put that you need not have any expertise i think that uh, uh, this should be promoted in a bigger way uh, dr pelin this question i mean uh, so because uh, how important it is for parents when they take a call because now you are all sitting in the same room and how important it is to take a call which is like a distress in your office or your financial situation or something which you know education whatever in front of the children how you know because we may just lift the phone and start talking without realizing that you know your your child is listening yeah no that's a problem uh, especially i mean i i face that day in and day out i i go to my clinic i go to the csa hospital then i come home and then there are a lot of telephone consultations because now with uh, covid uh, we are trying to <clears throat> encourage people to call doctors and speak and uh, many times uh, you know my my children end up listening to what i tell the parents and uh, uh, so this is at least medical and most of the time it is reassuring the parents but uh, many times you know when uh, we talk on the phone we don't realize that uh, you know uh, what we say we might be talking something relevant to the person who is on the other side but people around us are listening to us and they may not uh, for them that information which you are giving out may be wrong so i think uh, that uh, you know we need to uh, keep that in mind especially when we talk with with children around us make sure that uh, when we uh, talk about uh, anything you know that might not that might uh, uh, you know cause any harm to their mindset to their thinking i think we should keep them keep it away from children because most of children are very sharp they they are much better than us at joining to certain things and then they their imagination takes over and uh, it is very easy for them to develop uh, negative thoughts about uh, illnesses and when we talk about death on the phone or somebody dying and all financial so, situations also Yeah, yeah. Within your own house. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that within within the house, I think we need to uh, uh, keep. That's a very good point, actually. What you make because we need to uh, watch what we speak. Even if you are uh, if you are working from home, if you are an engineer or whatever, uh, if you are shouting at somebody on the phone, you know, with regards to you might be stressed out and all, but that definitely leaves a negative impact because. as elders and as parents we are role models for our children and uh, we should understand that they are going to learn from what we are doing we are their heroes so what we do at home it reflects into their life in their future so i think even you know fighting between husband and wife can it should happen probably but not in front of the children <laughs> anger and you know those things because your children learn from you. Uh, doctor one well, now we see that we have kind of handled the second wave we can see less cases you know there is no panic on what they do looking for uh, beds and oxygen yeah. there, there's no more people passing on du numbers and things like that you know? uh, but now everybody is trying to say okay we are going to gear up for the third wave i know you mentioned that but if you can really reassure us with the positive thing about whatever this third wave is going to hit the children because finally for a parent the children child is everything yeah uh, there actually there is no scientific basis on people talking about third wave being more serious in children let me make that clear so far i think it's only common sense uh, which everybody is saying okay first wave 
you know it was serious with uh, senior citizens then second wave middle aged people so now it is going to come down to younger age group i think that is by just by common sense that kind of uh, message is being spread around as far as uh, uh, the science is concerned the medical field is concerned the statistics research none of it is as of now saying that children are going to be very badly affected now when you say first wave uh, there were fewer children second wave there are more children because the number of people in total who are affected are more suppose there were 10, 10 people affected in the first wave and out of that one was a child obviously now when there are 100 people 10 children are going to be affected so the percentage is not increasing the percentage of people children who are affected are not increasing if you look at the statistics uh, in india i think uh, first wave it was 6.5% of uh, children were affected under 10 year old children i mean uh, not under 10 years zero to 18 years only 6.5 were affected 6.5% now the second wave it has slightly gone up to around 8% so it's not a major it's only about an increase of of about 15% or so so this third wave the whole thing about this third wave the only positive thing i can think about is that at least we are more ready to face that third wave but then the whole talk about children will be very seriously affected uh, i don't think uh, that is going to happen children will be affected equal numbers or in the same proportion as the second wave but they will still be safe so we need not worry they will still not be so badly affected it is going to be similar to this if at all that third wave uh, happens so i hope it doesn't happen but uh, doctor one thing that uh, i think uh, we uh, kind of didn't talk about is a, a very important thing which people think is the key to beat the virus is the vaccine but on one hand there are lot so many people who are scared of the vaccine because again statistics so many died of uh, blood thing and you know uh, so many and so one actor died because he was given a vaccination and he died so uh, can you just tell us about uh, vaccination and is it so important whether it is co co vaccine or co vc or does that make so much of difference uh yeah regarding vaccines now because this co- this covid is in the media's attention for uh, for i mean so badly in their attention people people's domain and everybody is thinking about it so we have had vaccines for so many other illnesses and all those vaccines have a rare possibility of a side effect definitely so it's not that uh, you know all these uh, vaccines which we have been giving to our children were absolutely safe but then Mm-hmm. what we should understand is that a vaccine will protect more people than it would kill or it would cause a problem too so if at all you know if you just look at covid vaccine uh, people uh, talk about heart related thrombosis and all that now out of uh, out of 100 people with covid if there are uh, 10 people or 15 people who are developing a heart attack who have got the covid infection but at the same time the same you know blood clotting problem is there in 1 in 6 lakh people who are got vaccinated now where is 1 in 6 lakh and where is 1 in 10 so the vaccine would it's not absolutely safe i don't think any vaccine will be 100% safe even those vaccines which we are using for children all over the, over the last 5 6 decades none of the vaccines are 100% safe but then vaccines prevent death or disability in many many more number of people than you know causing a problem in them so vaccines are safe they are absolutely safe as a, at an individual level okay if i tell you that you have one in 10 6 uh, lakh to get a complication because of the vaccine it is a chance which you should take because you the chance of you getting covid is much much more than that so if you can protect it with the vaccine then there's nothing like it so all the and this regarding the actor getting it and all there's no proof it can be coincidental or you know the doctors who have treated him have said that it's got nothing to do with the vaccine so i would believe that but uh, but then there's no vaccine which is absolutely uh, safe i don't think we will ever get a covid vaccine which is 100% safe for anyone but then this is a small power, it's a small risk what the media is doing is it's uh, just highlighting that one in 6 lakh or one in 3 lakh person who gets a, a complication so i don't think we need to uh, you know really worry too much about the vaccine i think everybody should go and take the vaccine no problem which is the bigger evil that's what you you need to ask yeah, yeah. Now, the covid is a uh, you know maybe 1000 times bigger threat to you 
than the vaccine. So it makes sense to go and take the vaccine. For every person who has been reported, there are lakhs of people who have got the vaccine and not had any problem. So I don't think we need to worry too much. And the, regarding which vaccine to use, um, I can tell you that data says they're all equally good. It's only a matter of one is 72 percent, one is 80 percent, another one is 82 percent. When you take two doses of any particular vaccine, that they will definitely prevent 100 percent. It will prevent death and serious illness in any person. So it may not prevent you from uh, getting infected. So that means even if you're vaccinated, you need to maintain social distancing so that you will not get the infection and give it to somebody in your family. But then uh, it will definitely prevent death and uh, uh, disease, severe disease. Doctor, one question. Uh, see, suppose I have taken a Covishield vaccine for my first uh, jab, and uh, then suddenly somebody says, why you took Covishield? You should have taken Covaxin. Can I go for Covaxin for the second jab? Or should they both be the same? Yeah, uh, as of now, I think they're still doing studies to see okay. if we can interchange the vaccine. Okay, okay. It's still uh, so I will not be able to answer that question. Uh, one thing we know with the history of any vaccine is that you take more number of shots, there's no problem. Okay, we, we have vaccines for about 26 different diseases now, 25 or 26 diseases. And uh, looking at the history of all the previous vaccines for any illness, we know that extra shots, suppose a child is brought to me with, uh, uh, with an immunization card and uh, they say that they don't remember or they've lost the card uh, and they're not part given a particular vaccine or they're not sure. I say extra vaccine will not cause harm. But missing a vaccine may cause you, you know, more trouble. So uh, in the future, I think you'll get an answer uh, for this question. Uh, suppose you take Covishield and then you take Covaxin, whether it one one of both the <laughs> companies. Yeah? No, because people keep hearing this was better than that. That was better than this. Why did you take that? Why did you take this? You know? So I'm just no, 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 no. I don't think uh, it's not, it's got any great difference. I think we should just take whichever vaccine is available. And there are studies to prove that both, uh, I can share it to you. There are studies to prove that all the, you know, even Sput Sputnik or you know, any vaccine which is recommended in India, there's not such a big difference. And uh, it's all, you know, same. It's, it's just that, you know, WhatsApp or in the newspaper, we say, they say that, you know, health workers are taking Covaxin after taking Covishield. That is, I mean, that's individually, they're just taking things in their own hand, but it's not recommended. But whether two vaccines, two different vaccines can be given and whether it is still effective, we need to wait for studies. Okay. Uh, somebody with, uh, wants to ask you a okay. question. Uh, Dina Stone, you can unmute your mic. Yeah. To clarify one thing, uh, I just wanted to know that some say that when you take uh, Covaxin, in case you want to travel abroad, uh, it won't be valid. So I just wanted to verify this because... Uh, yeah, that is true. As of now, uh, Covishield is the one which uh, WHO has recognized. So in many yeah. countries, uh, Covishield is the one which they would accept. Yeah. Uh, uh, of course, now traveling anyway is restricted. By the time all these yeah. restrictions are lifted, I think Covaxin also will be approved. So yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. don't worry about that. Okay. No, it will take some time, but I, I think ultimately it will be approved. So approved. The, the yeah, problem. But it is true that as of now, Covishield is the one which is recognized uh, abroad. Okay. The, the problem okay. is for <laughs> Thank people, you, doctor. The students who have taken uh, university you know, admissions and things like that, because WHO says only by mid-July or something that they will be able to really sort this problem out. So the terms are starting and, you know, children... I mean, the universities are not allowing them to, to join. So that is a problem. And they have paid a lot of money to, to join these universities. So, yeah. yeah, it would, they, from what I heard, it would take a few weeks to get the approval from, from the co-vaccine company. Uh, anybody else would like to ask a question? Uh, Pastor, you would like to, I mean, uh, it's uh, been... Yeah, somebody is raising, raising their... And I think Reverend Mitra is <clears throat> raising Ruth, his hand. Somebody, Ruth, uh, Ruth, Hema, uh, uh, Somebody can just uh, put up. Reverend, I won't make out my name. You put your hand in the window. Ruth, 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 Ruth. Okay, Ruth. 
Ruth wants to ask. Ruth, Ruth, I think Ruth, Ruth, ma'am. Okay. Uh, you can yeah. unmute yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've done that. Yeah. Ruth, Ruth. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, 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 you're heard. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. You can hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, ma'am. Can I be heard, Herbert? Yes, yes, you are heard. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, my question, you know, I just want to clarify with Dr. Femin, because when he said that during the second wave, uh, it, it, uh, you know, it could be a, a practical, uh, you know, factor favorable to us when more than one person in a family uh, is getting infected with a virus, that they can all be quarantined, you know, together like more than one person can be in one room while they are recovering. But we also hear, doctor, that uh, this can cause viral overload on the patients and might hamper their recovery. Uh, Ma'am, I think- Is that uh, true? Uh, I think it's the, it, it is a theory which is there that especially when you're, when you're eating together, like you are removing your mask and, you know, you are, uh, uh, when you're eating food, you're not wearing a mask. So when, when that happens, that especially when you're eating, that is the only time when you oh. need to maintain a social distancing among the people who are positive. Now, uh, in the initial part of this pandemic, uh, that was uh, being uh, you know, talked about a lot. Now uh, that uh, you know, seems to have taken a backseat. But then what I advise is that you know, people who are positive, especially when they are sitting together and eating, that's when they're mask will go off, but otherwise they'll all have to wear a mask, but they can stay in the same room. And of course, it's, it's just a, it's a practical difficulty. Most houses will not have four rooms to, for four people to stay uh, away. And the amount of uh, uh, difficulty which they face when they have to cook for each other or someone has to cook and one person has to go and supply somebody else in another room. And then there should be a toilet attached to that room. So I think uh, I always feel that if, if many people are affected, it may be a blessing in disguise. Though I wouldn't say that everybody should be positive. So, but then it's a practically what I have seen in the second wave is that when, uh, you know, at least if, if two out of four are affected, then they have company, they can stay together. The risk of being overload, viral overload and all, I don't think that matters. One, Thank you. One, Thank you, one, doctor. Thank one, you. One aspect is about this airborne transmission also you know in a, a room which is not which is poorly ventilated there is a possibility that you know that more people can be affected so oh. but there are no i mean we don't know the full answers for all these things you know so but all yeah, these once if they are positive that means already the virus has entered their body and started multiplying so uh, you know uh, the viral load may make an impact but, uh, but then, um, you know, when you wear a mask and, you know, those other uh, um, measures, the risk of the, that load being too much and causing more trouble is not as high as we would imagine. It's not like one plus one is adding to two. So it may be there in a few small percentage, but not in the majority. Uh, the doctors, uh, I would ask you both uh, how, uh, how important it is to actually come out in the sun and you know during this time at least once in three days or once in a week because most of them are just locking themselves up they're sleeping through the day or awake in the night you know they're not having any contact with the sun yeah even otherwise even we even when there is no covid we are not having any contact with the sun so, <laughs> so how uh, yeah how many because for us to maintain our vitamin d levels you know sunlight the most important thing is uh, sunlight gives us vitamin d which is very deficient in our diet. You know, if you have to have enough vitamin D in your body, you should be eating half a kilo of salmon fish every day. How many of us will do that? So that amount of vitamin D can be supplied by standing in the sunlight for half an hour oh, with yeah. a sleeveless shirt and, uh, you know, um, exposing yourself, uh, your limbs as much as possible. So that, is, that should be in the midday, not in the early morning or late evening. Between 10 a.m., to 3 p.m. That is the time. During that time, if you can spend about half an hour in the sunlight, it is good for you. So, uh, you know, definitely. Otherwise, you'll uh, all of us. I think 
eighty percent of us here, including me, when we go and do our vitamin D levels, I'm sure Dr. Stanley would agree that we'll all have a low levels of vitamin D. And how important is vitamin D during? Uh, I think Reverend I mean, Mitra has a question. Immunity and stuff. Who has a question? I think yeah, Reverend I, Mitra has a question. I'm going to unmute you, sir. Uh, unmute, unmute yourself. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, um, uh, two small things. Any one of you can answer this. One, if a patient now, this is all the fear that fear that is being created in the media and the WhatsApp that we know. One is if a person is vaccinated. And uh, how long does it take for this vaccine to adversely uh, effect or adverse effects will be seen or uh, experienced in a person who is vaccinated? Uh, number one. Number two, that it was also there in the, uh, you know, it was going viral. That vaccination that uh, you, Covishield or whatever, Pfizer or Moderna, whatever, whatever that is uh, come. Now these are only specific protection. Other immunity, Im immunity system is affected or weakens, uh, the, they say, number one, it may not protect you from the other kind of a thing. It only can detect the, co the COVID virus. And uh, then there, somebody said, that once you are vaccinated within uh, for a couple of days, uh, you know that your immune system is weak. So therefore you better keep yourself away from uh, going out or exposing yourself to the others. How true are these, uh, Dr. Femin or Dr. Stanley? Uh, any of you can comment about this, please. I think Femin, you are more up to date with this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't. Hear. I didn't hear. Tell me. Yeah. Regarding the uh, regarding the vaccines, uh, there are two types of side effects. Okay. Uh, when you say side effects, they are not harmful. It will be there in about uh, you know uh, uh, about maybe some ten percent or twenty percent or even fifty percent of people will have side effects, and these side effects will be like pain where you got the shot for maybe two days. Some people may not experience. I took to both the doses of COVID shield, and both the times I had absolutely no symptoms at all. In fact, next day somebody had to ask me, "How are you feeling?" Then only I realized that I had taken a vaccine the previous day. But uh, some many people experience uh, pain in the uh, shoulder wherever the vaccine was given. Yeah, yeah. Some yeah. people get uh, have that pain for a longer duration for two to three days. Some oh. people have, have get general body pain again. Okay. Maximum three to five days they get. Some people may get a little bit of fever also. So these mm. are common and they are harmless side effects. They don't cause any problem to you. Okay. Now, okay. People say you should uh, you know, avoid uh, stressing and uh, exercising and all because in case you develop fever, then mm. uh, the, the exercise and all that may add on to your discomfort and you might feel more worse uh, you know, uh, thinking that the vaccine has caused you this problem. Now, uh, second thing, the serious side effects, which can yes. happen, which is rare, yeah. very, very rare, yeah. uh, can happen between two to four weeks. Whatever, whatever the few side effects which we are reading about in the paper can happen between two to four weeks. So that, uh, that after four weeks, I don't think as of now, uh, after four weeks, there's no possibility of you developing any complication because of the vaccine as such. And regarding your second question on uh, whether uh, you know uh, your, it weakens your immunity, definitely no, because vaccine is a very small amount of antigen which is entering your body. Okay, hmm. every day we are consuming loads and loads of food which are also having antigens. We are breathing loads and loads of viruses. We are floating in viruses. All the viruses are going into your, your body. So every day we are exposed to thousands of antigens, thousands of new antigens. So just by this one new antigen, it is not your immunity is not going to be weakened even for a day. So okay. 
yeah but but then uh, when you get the side effects and all it just means that your body has taken up the vaccine and it is trying to produce antibodies you are just trying to tell the body see uh, the covid infection is there you are actually cheating your body okay you are trying to tell the body covid in, uh, the virus has entered but wherein you are not sending the virus you are either sending a very weakened virus or you are sending an antigen a part of the virus which is going to cause you no harm so but the body thinks that the covid virus has entered and it starts producing immunity it immediately you know it's getting ready for battle so that when the actual enemy it's like a trial you know you are ready with all your bullets and guns when the actual uh, enemy enters you are ready with all your ammunition so that is how a vaccine works but there at no point of time there is a uh, decrease in your immunity if you take children's vaccine like you, you give we give mmr vaccine for children who are 9 months 15 months and uh, uh, five years three doses mm. of mmr and each of those uh, doses of mmr has got three different vaccines that means mm. at the time when you are giving three vaccines in the same injection itself uh, your body is uh, able to produce immunity against all the three vaccines so okay. in effect that means even when you are given a vaccine even if there is a virus which is entering your body or a bacteria which is entering your body your immunity is still good enough to fight that so your okay. your you taking vaccines will not affect you the third okay. question i did not uh, the third part of your question i did not I the third one. third part of question was it only is good for covid the uh, uh, virus but it is not good for any other virus yeah definitely uh, that's true that's true because uh, this is uh, but the, we are giving a part of the covid virus into your body so your body is producing antibodies against the covid virus So okay with protecting some other virus may not be possible unless uh, something which is very similar to covid uh, you know infects you you may not have uh, immunity against any other virus okay right now the simple layman's question it is dr femin that is um, we had recently both of us me and my wife irene had um, you know covid shield first dose and uh, except a little warmth on our shoulder a negligible or unnoticeable pain nothing of that sort happened so somebody said that means this the what is that <laughs> vaccine did not act on you so how true is that so i think the first thing is that you should you should put your witness in your whatsapp group saying that you did not have any symptoms so that people are not afraid to take the vaccine Number okay one. good i uh, know i have already i have already sent messages to quite a few friends we had no problem whatsoever yeah and uh, so it is it seemed to be quite safe yeah. i mean i do i have not promoted that but i've just said that you know we did not have any problem and uh, we just thank god you know we which we were just praising the lord yeah, uh, that, i mean i would just say when you when you look at infection itself we are saying that 80% of people don't develop too much of symptoms whereas 20% may develop serious problems yeah. why exactly that those 20 people are having the symptoms which are severe and why the 80% of people are just having infection we still don't have answers to that this, okay uh, when you take a vaccine it is similar each person's immune system reacts to an antigen differently okay so, but but then uh, we never measure uh, the immunity or the effectiveness of the vaccine by the amount of side effects you get even if you don't and this has been happening not just for covid from the time i started practicing pediatrics the parents used to bring their children back to us and said sir you gave a vaccine and you said fever will come but especially dpt vaccine used to cause lot of side effects swelling and all there were some children who used to get nothing and their parents used to come to us and say is the vaccine really working because my child did not get any fever no side effects at all so should we give it again or sometimes they may also say did the sister really give the injection or did she not <laughs> no, <laughs> no. That, that was one of the that was a question even to my mind <laughs> so whether the, the whether the doctor really injected any you know the uh, the vaccine at all <laughs> yeah, or did, did he give it to the pillow next to you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah thank you so much thank you <laughs> appreciated that <Thank> you. <laughs>
I, I think uh, are there any more questions coming in or a question i think uh, our doctors are somebody, somebody? Uh, mona sam mona mona sam mona ma'am i've got a question doctor yeah. Yeah. i hope it's for dr stanley <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Stanley is on the non-striking end. <laughs> ah, okay. Okay, so I'll take a single. I'll take a single then. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Go ahead. I, I, I warned uh, Herbert that this is not a make my people laugh occasion. You know, it is. <laughs> yeah. Tell me. Tell me. So go ahead. Andy, you can ask Miss Samson. You can ask the question. Hello. Check. You're on, uh, Ms. Samson. Come on. Is an alcoholic when he going for this? For, uh, can an alcoholic take the vaccine? Yeah. Uh, you could, uh, if you're finding it difficult, you can just type that in the chat. I can talk. No, I. Uh, yeah, 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 please. Yeah, please. Yeah, you. Yes, Miss Samson. Doctor. Doctor heard my question. Yeah, I think you wanted to ask whether an alcoholic can take the vaccine or whether there is any restriction for an alcoholic to take the vaccine. Yeah, uh, there is no restriction for alcoholics to take the vaccine. After taking the vaccine, you know, they are advised not to drink for maybe an, a day or so. But then uh, there is not much, it's, you know, it's not a major uh, concern as long as, and I don't think, you know, when you, when they're giving the vaccine, they don't ask you whether you're consumed alcohol or not. So I don't think that's a problem. No problem. Thank you, doctor. Okay. Thank you. But the, but the ah. thing is, uh, if, if somebody drinks a lot of alcohol and uh, dies next day, they will blame it on the vaccine. vaccine. So that's the problem. Uh, I think Priya Bada wants to ask something. Yeah. Priya Bada, uh, you are unmuted so you can ask the question. No, nothing. Oh, okay. Nothing. I want to ask. Nothing. Shall I ask question? Yes, I, yes. I, yeah, some of my friends are telling God will save us. I will not take the vaccination. Is it correct? God has told me and given me the uh, knowledge to develop a vaccine and to study the vaccine. And God has given me the data also that it is effective. And God has told me to save as many number of people as possible. <laughs> so, it is by God's will that we are giving vaccine. So, otherwise, otherwise, doctor. Otherwise, eighty percent of people who get the COVID, they will also develop immunity. Nothing happens to them <laughs> because they will also have immunity. Um. Again, you know, probably it is God's design that you know not everybody is becoming sick. So. You know, we should be thankful for that. Uh, and uh, as, you know, as, as far as, uh, you know, um, as a doctor, I can say that uh, I'm a, I would believe that I'm a Christian and I would believe God, but I wouldn't put God to the test and say, I've, I've got such and such an illness and I will just sit at home. No, I wouldn't do that. I don't agree with that kind of a faith. Thank you, Dr. All right, doctor. Okay, thank you, doctor. Okay. I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. don't think any more questions you. are coming in. Yeah, I'm sure there'll be many more. Sorry. Questions. I'm sure there'll be many more questions, but then. Yeah, if we keep off. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Time we have <laughs> answer every, we have every, answer yes. everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no uh, yes. 
Yeah. Uh, Reverend Mitra, you still have a question? I see your lips. No. I'm speaking still. Reverend uh, Mitra speaking? Yeah. Mute, unmute yourself, Reverend Mitra. Reverend Mitra, you have to unmute yourself. Reverend Mitra, you can unmute. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> no, I just wanted to thank both the doctors and Reverend Violet for arranging this. This was very enriching and um, uh, sort of, you know, it uh, drives away uh, uncalled for fear, uncalled for, uh, you know, thoughts and anxiety and worries. Um, and though I would have uh, loved to see many more people participate, but then few of us, but yet it was uh, very, very enriching. Thank you all of you for doing it, including Herbert for moderating. I just want one Thank request you. to make to all the pastors and all the congregation members to become volunteers, you know, because it's not just the COVID issue. There are so many illnesses that need help and we can do this very effectively, you know, and especially nowadays, you know, the cost has come down because we have a Zoom platform. We can train people easily. So it's a yeah. matter of churches getting organized, selecting a few people, you know, those who are interested and doing it. And if you get a national level certificate, it will certainly, for the young people, it will add to their CV. You know, it is very good to know that you oh, are yeah, yeah, yeah. trained in, in this kind of a thing because palliative care is catching up worldwide, everywhere. I know. We should, we should do an uh, entire... Uh, 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 meeting on this subject, uh, Doctor. I think it's quite a vast subject. And uh, the sixteen, hour, the sixteen-hour program is is a must if you want to get a certification, and it can be broken down depending on the uh, what you call convenience of the people who have asked for it or or the church which has organized it. So you can have two three hours, you know, in the evening, and and do it over four or five days. Uh, there are various ways you can do it. Yeah. Or over you can, a couple of days, weekends, you can do, you know, eight hours, eight hours, 16 hours. Yes, okay. two days, correct. Yeah, I, I, I think that's uh, an eye opener. I think, you know, uh, yeah, I think as a church, as a community, we can build up that to a you know, team of volunteers and uh, you know, partner in the healing ministry. I think that's that's the way forward, yes. I feel. You know, uh, uh, yes. Times like yes. this, when our uh, families are going through that difficult times, uh, of course, there is the mm. spiritual aspect. We come together, we pray, but we also give hand as uh, volunteers. I think that's a very good, uh, I mean, it's a real eye-opener. I think we should take it forward, uh, you know, uh, as many as members would uh, want to. Uh, can uh, participate in this and uh, definitely yes. that will help us yes. in the coming days. Yes. Yes. So, yes. yeah. But if you're young people, try to get more young After, uh, Reverend Dennis would want to say anything before we close. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I think uh, we can uh, motivate our youngsters uh, to volunteer for this. That will be of uh, you know, good uh, community, building up the community, church as a body we can move forward. So, yeah, as we close, I think uh, I deeply uh, express my heartfelt gratitude to both uh, Dr. Stanley and uh, to Dr. Femin. Uh, really, it was very encouraging and uh, uh, words of assurance coming from doctors' mouth is really a, a blessing for us. You know, uh, it's like a booster. <laughs> uh, so, uh, though we are waiting for our vaccine, <laughs> so it's like we are already received uh, the first shot. <laughs> no, I think I should uh, so, congratulate you. Thank you so because much. Of, uh, because it's a very innovative uh, thought which you had and to bring this uh, sort of discussion, you know, uh, yeah. uh, thinking about this. I think uh, this is the first time, uh, you know, some church is doing something like that. I think this is, this should be, you know, good for many other uh, churches as well. I think they should have such programs. Yeah, uh, uh, I, actually, in fact, uh, uh, no, when uh, 
I mean, last few weeks we've been losing our church members, some youngsters, some of course, uh, of course, we are losing our uh, very elderly as well. And it was a very painful experience for Wesley family. And uh, in one of the uh, funerals, or, or I think there were two funerals one day. And of course, that's the day that of course, Mr. Herbert and uh, some more other church members, we were there at the cemetery. We were uh, discussing how this you know, very fact of uh, fear and anxiety uh, can really bring down people you know, in their mental uh, health and uh, being so discouraged and depressed. So that's when this very uh, idea of webinar uh, was uh, thought of and I'm happy that uh, uh, at least some of our members would participate this evening and this uh, could uh, really be a blessing for all of us who participated this evening. So once again, many thanks to Dr. Stanley and uh, Dr. Femin and of course to Mr. Herbert for uh, organizing this and being the uh, support in the technical side as well. And for all the participants, uh, church members, uh, from wherever you've participated, I'm sure you have uh, it's been a blessing for each one of you and uh, also i think this entire program has been recorded for those who really could not participate sorry yeah yeah, yeah yeah it's recorded so for those on youtube it will be uploaded on youtube and also put on our church facebook page so people can share it to other people and wonderful conversation can help not only our church it helps anybody and I think, uh, thank you very much. For, uh, certainly, Dr. certainly. Yeah. I mean, uh, I can just uh, still sit with you all and go on talking. But, uh, you know, Maybe. Uh, if talking. I known that you're going to, <laughs> I might have measured my words a little bit sober. <laughs> <laughs> Next time we'll have a dinner. So we'll all share the same. Yeah, but, uh, I'll go to you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So once again, uh, thank you. And uh, of course, uh, we will plan to take it forward, whatever we've uh, learned this evening, uh, so that we'll be able to build church as a community. We'll be able to reach out to people uh, you know, in suffering and in uh, difficult times. So uh, I think we'll wind up uh, with prayer. Uh, and thank God for all that he's been to us thus far for his faithfulness and his guidance in our lives as individuals, as families, and as a church, as a community. Shall we close with prayer? Sovereign Lord, our loving Heavenly Father, how grateful we are to you because you are a covenant-keeping God and your words come to us afresh, assuring us, encouraging us. Thank you because your love is steadfast upon all those who fear you and your love is so constant and your love is unconditional. And we thank you because you are a God who is in control and we thank you for reminding us of the same this evening. Though, Lord, as humanity, as the entire world, and especially our nation, is going through difficult times due to pandemic, yes, Lord, we also know and we understand that many of our families are struggling in various ways. But, Lord, amidst all this, we also mm -hmm. know that we have a God in whom we can hope, and we have a God who's there with us, journeying with us in these difficult moments. You have not left us, nor forsaken us. And so, Lord, we want to thank you because you're a God, Emmanuel. We thank you because you're a God who gives us courage. And we thank you because you're a God who enables us to sail through the stormy situations. We thank you because you're a God who stretches out your hand to hold us when we feel that we are sinking. We thank you because you're an unchanging God in a changing times like this. And we once again, Lord, want to thank you for the resource people you brought to us to speak to this evening. Thank you for Dr. Stanley McAdin. Thank you for Dr. Femin. Thank you, Lord, for using them as your instrument in bringing the words of assurance and encouragement and to give us guidance even as we face various challenges during this pandemic times. We thank you for all those members who participated and were blessed by this very program this evening. We also want to thank you for the technical expertise and uh, who are always there to help us in times like this to organize programs. Thank you for that entire team. We also, Lord, want to pray that even as we plan to take forward whatever we've learned, we pray and ask of your guidance and ask of your presence and ask of your blessings to be upon us. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. With the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, love of God, our Heavenly Father, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, 
be with you, abide with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you once again and God bless us all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.